While building my bandsaw, I discovered it was making a noise. After checking the wheels and several other things, they turned out to be very well balanced and quiet. The issue turns out to be my motor. This induction motor comes from a large commercial treadmill. I actually have two of these guys, so I've already removed the noise making motor and put this replacement in place. Now, induction motors don't have very many moving parts. You can see here's the body, here's the rotor, and here's one of the end bells. All I did was uh, loosen these nuts and pull the end off. Then I ordered one of these guys. This is a gear puller, which I paid a little less than 30 bucks for. I'll put a link in the description for you on that. I am doing this for the first time, so I'm sure I'm going to miss something. But uh, I have already pulled the bearings using the gear puller, and it's really simple. Now, there, there's one little caveat about using this gear puller. The teeth are not very long. And so looking at the bearing, you can see right here, it left a little bit of an indent in the casing. I'm not terribly worried about that, and you probably shouldn't be either, because if you're using a gear puller, it's probably because you're going to be trashing these guys. But if you listen, I'm going to hold this up to my microphone. It is really quite noisy, and you multiply that up to 1700 RPM, it, it definitely makes a lot of noise. Now, these bearings have a number on the side. I used that number to figure out which one to order. And so I ordered these replacements. And this guy, and near my mic, is very quiet like it should be. So these are my replacement bearings. And I'm going to show you how I intend to get this guy back on. Inside the casing here, all the way down in the bottom, there is a little thrust washer. I took that out, I wiped out the housing, wiped down the uh, thrust bearing just to make sure it's nice and clean. So my two new bearings, they need to be press fit back onto the shaft in these two locations. I've got some sandpaper. I'm going to use 400 grit sandpaper because that's what I have. But really you just want to smooth out some of the area that has rusted a little bit that the bearing has to slide past. And that already looks a whole lot better. And the idea is now you want to just slip this back on. But of course, it was press fit originally, which makes it really difficult. Uh, in the videos I've watched, uh, several people were using like a big arbor press, but I don't have anything like that. So I went to the store and bought a short piece of pipe. I was very careful to choose a pipe that would only press on the inner race. This is not a thrust bearing. It's not designed for thrusting loads this way. It's designed for radio loads this way. So uh, to make sure I don't damage the bearing while installing it, I walked through the store and looked for a pipe that had an ID that was just barely inside of my inner race here. And that way, when I press on this, the ID should fit over this shaft but it's small enough that it's not pressing against this uh, mid surface here, especially, or the outer race where it might damage the bearing. So I'm going to slip this over the shaft and using a regular clamp, I'm going to try to press these guys back on. Again, I'm trying this for the first time, so let's see how it works. When I was at the store and I bought this pipe, I wasn't sure how long of a pipe I needed. So I didn't want to buy one that was too short. I bought a long one here, but now I see that from both sides, I can press it on and I only need about that much. I'm going to quickly cut this down a little bit and then we'll finish pressing that on. My pipe's been cut now and actually the shorter one will probably be just fine. So I'll put this on like so. Shorten this up to about the right. Be really careful to make sure you're only pressing on the inner race. And that's a bit hot from the miter saw, using a cutoff wheel, of course. All right, I think that's about as close as I'm going to get. So, that is not actually going on. I'm just bowing. 
you can see that, hopefully. That is not pressing so well. I need more force than what this guy can supply. Let's back that off a little bit. This guy is just not strong enough in order to get it on there. Let's try something else. All right. This guy has a much thicker neck, but uh, the feet are a little bit softer. I don't know if this is gonna work. Let's give it a shot. And this guy is bowing a little bit as well. And it would be better if I had a thread here so that I could get uh, a much better mechanical advantage than having to squeeze. But I don't want to say that's not working. I got too, I got too far to go. It's gonna spring off of there. There we go. All right, I got one more clamp that I want to try. Well, gentlemen, that's just not going to get it. All right, that didn't work. Well, I didn't want it to come to this, but I'm going to use a hammer. Now, I already know some of you have already scrolled to the comments and you're ready to scream at me for doing this, but I'm really not terribly worried about it. So, I have got the pipe right on the inner race. I'm going to be very careful to keep it centered on the inner race and that's going to be the only place I'm applying force. All right, here we go. And look at that. She's moving. Almost home. Oh, that is beautiful. All right, before I go any further, I thought I'd show you that inner race. The bearing is nice and quiet. You can see there aren't even any scratches on the inner race there or the bearing surface itself because I didn't hit it. Uh, I was very careful in picking the right size pipe, so that's going to be critical. That So when you hit that bearing, you're only hitting it on the inner race. So this worked out to be really good. It's a 25 millimeter shaft, and this is a one inch uh, pipe. Now, uh, one inch ID is 25.4 millimeters. So this turned out to be pretty much exactly what I needed. It's just large enough that it easily slips over the shaft, but you get a nice surface area for pressing on the inner race. Let's get this bearing fully seated and go to the other side. Just to be clear, I do not think this is the right way to do this, but <laughs> it's working. All right, <clears throat> and the comments are on their way. And is that fully seated? I got just a tiny bit more to go. Okay, let's get this guy back in. I have pressed this on. It's a really snug fit. I had to push on it, but we do have that guy back in and the other bearing is in. Now let's just slip it back on. One more thing I want to point out here is these long bolts have a plastic sleeve on them. That's just to protect it. That's like electrical insulation, making sure that no wires can short out against this bolt here. So you don't want to damage that. Now, when I initially tried to get this guy off, this one uh, started curling up underneath the bolt and that's why I left the bolt in there because I didn't want to tear off this plastic insulation here. So I'm gonna, that's why I left that bolt in there. My ground cable is attached to one of these bolts. So uh, do be sure to put that back on. Just like so. Well, as always, when you try to rush, um, I grabbed my drill bit, put this in there in order to get these bolts on faster. And as you can see, I stripped the threads right off the end of this screw. Now, after some tinkering around, I figured out that this is a 632 nut. So I'm gonna see if I can't replace this threaded rod 
I need to uh, re-insulate it like this here. So I'll take some uh, insulating shrink wrap and uh, heat shrink it on there. If I can't find this bolt or if the cost is ridiculous, I'll just use threaded rod. You can get 632 threaded rod or any size threaded rod. Get one that's long enough and put a bolt on both sides. So the message is don't rush and it doesn't need to be all that tight. Well, I can tell you even without wiring it up, that is a billion times better. Maybe a trillion. Wow, so much quieter. I mean, when you hear that, that sounds awful. Even that one bearing is making more noise than the whole motor now. So anyway, I learned a lot of interesting things about bearing numbers and I might go back and uh, I might come back and make a video about the bearing numbers. But let's get this guy wired up and see what it sounds like running. Well, normally I will clamp the motor down here, but since I've got this wired to my bandsaw VFD, I'm going to slowly dial the speed up and hopefully I won't jump off the bench. All right, let's do this. Well, I know you didn't hear it before, but that is so much better. As you can probably tell, I am a total amateur at this. This is my first time doing it. So if you feel any intimidation with changing your bearings in your motor, then uh, don't. You just watch me do it for the first time. Anyway, uh, it wasn't too bad, but I'm sure that we've got some pros out there who'd love to give us some tips. Maybe you can offer some low-budget tips that'll make it a little easier for the next guy. Until then, thanks for watching.